I gave you glory, Lord. I gave you glory today. I gave you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. I gave you glory, Lord. I gave you glory today. I gave you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. I gave you glory, Lord. I gave you glory today, now and forevermore. You are the faithful God. I give you honor, Lord. You deserve all my praise. I give you worship, Lord. You are the mighty God. I give you glory, Lord. I give you glory today. I give you glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. I've come to give you the praise because you deserve it all. I've come to honor you. You are the most high God. I've come to bless your name. I've come to give you praise. I've come to honor you. You are the mighty God. I've come to adore you, I've come to worship you, I've come to give you praise, you deserve all my praise. For the rest of my days, I've come to worship you, Lord, for the rest of my days, I give you honor, Lord. I give you glory, Lord, I give you glory today, I give you glory, Lord, you are the mighty God. <laughs> Hi people, greetings. It's a chapter a day to keep you going, to boost your faith, to help you know who you are in Christ, what you, the power you possess, what you can or cannot do so you can live the Christ life perfectly here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Of course, that's all I desire. I don't know about you, but that's my greatest desire to be able to stand it, spend eternity with God in heaven and live the beautiful Christ life here on earth. Of course, it's very possible. You know why we pray the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there is supposed to be a moment where you enjoy the Christ life here on earth before you go to heaven. So it's not just like we're anticipating for heaven and then we're forgetting about earth. We can't be just miserable here. We need to live the kingdom life. You know, they say ambassadors, right? We're ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. Have you ever seen an ambassador suffering? An ambassador is not... It's not taken care of by the country where they are based. It's taken care of by their own country. So an, um, an American ambassador to Thailand is taken care of by the American government. It's not taken care of by the Thai government. So don't get it twisted. So if, Thais, if Thailand's economy is down and it's all zero, you know, the American ambassador to Thailand is not bothered. He's not perturbed because... His economy is of the economy of America, so he's still fine, though he's based in Thailand. So you get the trick, right? That's what is supposed to be happening to us as Christians. So we don't have to be miserable here on earth because our economy is of the kingdom of heaven and our father has everything. You know, our father has every single thing so we can't be miserable we we can't afford to be miserable that's just not possible so it's the bible that is our manual that is a blueprint that we can get to find out how we can live the kingdom life here on earth meaning enjoying the life of christ here on earth before we get to heaven oh yeah ambassadors get to end up going back to their countries eventually so of course we're just representing the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So we should enjoy it. We should love it. It should be beautiful because it is. Okay. If you're just tuning in, it's a chapter a day with your favorite girl, Princess Cleeton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> welcome on board, Mr. Mac Marcus. Welcome, welcome on board to my international village uncle, Prophet A.B. Mongo. Thank you for being here god bless you so we're starting with a word of prayer later on we're going for the bible part for the birthday party and soon to the bible party today we are actually doing numbers chapter 12. let's see how many verses numbers chapter 12 has numbers chapter 12 has 16 verses that's quite short oops okay let's see how it goes yesterday was also a kind of short um it was some sort of short read or i basically say average read but we had jam-packed lessons man numbers chapter 11 was 
filled with so much i mean like so so much i was just taken aback like every single thing that the holy spirit was ministering to us yesterday i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god you know that's how i was just going all through sorry people about the sound so let's pray father we thank you for today we thank you for this beautiful day that you've made we'll rejoice and be glad in it we thank you for keeping us safe and secure we thank you for protecting us we thank you for doing all the amazing things you've done in our lives oh god for keeping us safe carrying us out and bringing us in safely Lord, we want to say thank you for making it possible for us to be up and healthy we say thank you for giving us provision for protecting us oh lord for directing us we say thank you for our family members for our brothers sisters parents friends relatives and loved ones in and out of the nation that you've also been keeping we say thank you lord we have a heart of gratitude today because we know we can't even finish counting all the amazing things that you've done for us oh lord father we just give you all the praise we just give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it take permanence oh lord speak to us once again Watch your table to dine with you. We know we're going to get a balanced diet. So just let it flow. We're here to sup and we know it's going to be a great time as well. Increase while I decrease. So it's going to be you and you alone. That will be seen, felt and heard throughout every session of a chapter a day. Especially this one we're having right now. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. So let's get right on to the birthday party. And the birthday party has to do with people who are in our birthday book. So um, today we have Mom Mona Franca Bride. Mom Mona Franca Bride is actually my classmate as well. We're in secondary school together. She's also an amazing person, very lovable, very calm. She always looks out for everybody. She wants everybody around her to be happy, to be fine, and that's really a good thing. And we kind of lost contact after secondary school, but we got connected again in our accident association group. So I'm excited that we're connected again. She also loves singing, I think. The other day she was playing the piano in the group if i'm not mistaken oh i hope i didn't uh, i didn't mix it up but well i think it should be so um the next other person is mom kawa money mom kawa money is a doctor for excellence and she's just amazing always looking out for me and telling me oh you're doing a great job keep up the good work and everything and i remember some time ago i was talking about my business and she was like oh don't worry I am trying to stay off flower and all the snacky kinds of things, but I'll definitely support your business when the time is right. I was taken aback, man. There are just some people who can support you like that. And when I see people who have a heart of gold like that, I just can't help but stay connected to them like glue, stick to them like glue. Happy birthday to you, doc. And then we have, um, ma'am, Abu Audrey. She was also in the same school with me, but I think a class. A class ahead of me or something like that she's also a very quiet person and one thing i can remember about her is that we're the same size like th till date when i see some of our pictures i'm like it looks like we're just the people who didn't grow fat or we didn't increase in size yeah she was kind of smallish like me but she was a very friendly person very outgoing very outspoken person and i just couldn't help connecting with her and then the next person is Mam Nyoki Flavi. Mam Nyoki Flavi, I knew her just for a short while. She was a friend of my friend, but we became well close somehow. And she was also a friend to my kid brothers. Yeah, so we became close at some point in time because when I used to go to my friend's house, of course, she'll be there sometimes. And then she used to make fried potatoes and eggs i would never forget it was so tasty it was so amazing so um those are the people in our birthday book let's take it again happy birthday to you mom mona franca bride happy birthday to you dr kawa money happy birthday to you mom abo audrey happy birthday to you mom nyoikli flabby so those are the people who are in the birthday book today we're delighted to have you all and we pray that god is going to bless you all tremendously God is going to tremendously bless you all. So we have to pray for these birthday people now. That's what we have to do. And uh, we get right on to the Bible party. After the birthday party, it's always the Bible party. So let's pray for the birthday people. Do, do, do. Are you ready? Dun, dun, dun. Are you ready? I like singing people, so you have to bear with me. Lord, we worship you. We just give you all the praise today for all those who are born on this 27th day 
of January, O oh Lord. We say thank you. We thank you for keeping them safe and secure. We thank you for protecting them. We thank you for making it possible for them to have an additional year today, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that you write beautiful stories on the pages of their lives, even as those pages open today. Stories that will give them reasons to dance and rejoice and sing. And if you tarry to come, they'll be here next year, giving their testimony of your goodness upon their lives. Perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sounds wonder and twenty six state that as you turn away their captivity, they'll be like they that dream, and their mouth will be filled with laughter, and their tongues will be filled with singing. That they'll just sing and dance and rejoice for all the goodness that you'll be doing in their lives. Open the windows of heaven and rebuke every devourer. Cause them to be wall changers, trailblazers, and pace setters in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, O oh God, wherever the cry for help, help is going to show up for them because you're going to strategically position their destiny helpers, people that would see their vision and run with it, O oh God, and cause them to be able to progress, not stagnate. Divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress and divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to move forward. Open their eyes to also see that they should be destiny helpers to some people and open their enlighten their eyes to know who these people are and they should be strategically positioned to help these people as well when they also cry out for help father i pray that you open doors that only you can open and shut every door that is not of you oh father grant them opportunities that will cause them to get to the top and give them strategies techniques and ideas that will cause them to not only be at the top but to permanently stay there you are the God who lifts one up and brings down the other father i pray oh god that their gifts are going to make a way for them causing them to stand before before kings, not before mean men, and they'll keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Lord, I pray that you're going to cause them to increase in wisdom and statue, gaining favor before God and before men. In the mighty name of Jesus, money is going to be money in their pocket, blessings going to be blessings in their lives, favor is going to be favor in their lives as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, O oh God, whatever the lay their hands upon you, prosper it in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever they tread their feet upon, you give it to them as a possession. It is your word and your word is true your word never fails it never comes out void it always accomplishes the purpose for which it is sent lord i pray even as they're on the part of fulfilling purpose sometimes we get to this place where we feel overwhelmed we feel stranded we feel like we're choked and we feel like we can't go on anymore but they are going to hear a voice clean and clear voice that's going to tell them and say this is the way walk that we need so they won't stray apart they'll stay on course and fulfill purpose to the glory of your name that you glorify yourself through their lives in the mighty name of jesus Thank you, King of Glory, because I know you're a faithful father. Give them the ability and possibilities to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Lord, let your blessings encompass them as a shield round about so much so that no weapon formed or fashion against them shall prosper, and that there'll be a blessing in their generation and beyond, and that anyone who comes in contact with them would be literally blessed because the rub off of the blessings that is overflowing upon their lives. Thank you, Ancient of Days, because I know you've had an answer. Thank you for answering all our prayers and we seal them with the blood of Jesus. Thank you already because we know it's settled. It is done and thus said. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. Let it be as we've prayed. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Amen, people. We're getting right on with the bible party the bible party is taken from the book of numbers chapter 12 and it has 16 verses are you ready i'm ready as ever okay numbers chapter 12 and miriam and aaron spake against moses because of the ethiopian woman whom he had married for he had married an ethiopian woman and they said had the lord indeed spoken only by moses had he not spoken also by us and the lord heard it now the man moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth and the lord spake suddenly unto moses and unto aaron and unto miriam come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation and they three came out and the lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called aaron and miriam and they both came forth and he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. 
and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, and even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall, shall he behold, wherefore there were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not, in the, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people removed Hazareth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Oh my God, like this is short, but it's deep. You know, it's short, but it's deep. I'll say this, a lot of times we go badging on ministers of God. We go badging on people of God. I'm not disputing the fact that there are some men of God that are just something else. But as long as they're called by God, you have no freaking right. You have no right at all. Not even a tiny wincy bitsy right to talk about them. See, God had to bring, there are some of these men of God who are very humble and very calm. So when you say all this nonsense and all the stupid things about them, they will not react. They are not reacting all because they don't want to react. They know that God is going to fight their battle. And when you fall in God's hands against servants of God, eh? <laughs> uh, you see what happened to Miriam, right? We all saw what happened to Miriam. She became leprous. And the funny thing is, I'm wondering, you know how we women speak a lot? I'm sure Miriam should have said a lot of crazy things because she was the only one who got leprous. But when we started reading this thing, they said, and Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses. It's both of them who spoke. But I can imagine how scornful Miriam was. And to think she's a woman getting irritated about another woman. I seen, can we women just Please, please behave ourselves. One woman shine cannot stop yours. Just let the woman be. Miriam is probably planning to be somebody's wife someday. How will she feel when her own sister-in-laws are treating her the way she's probably treating this Ethiopian woman? How? No, think about it. Think about it. Put yourself in people's shoes before you do some really stupid things you do. I don't know why some women do all these things and they hope to get married someday. And then they are, they are actually fighting their sister-in-laws. They are fighting their brother's wives and their brothers. It's, it is sad. It is sad. And the funny thing is even Christians have joined the bandwagon. I'm confused. Why? Why? What is going on? What happened? Gone are the days where people will support their family members to do whatever they want to do. So you know that maybe the girl is even not the right kind of girl. But because your brother has said this is the person she's in love with, you have to bear with it. It's your brother who is going to be in the marriage, not you. So if he has made up his mind to bear with the woman, you have to also bring yourself to bear with the woman. But just keep your distance. As much as that, it's his family anyways. He's not coming to live with you. Oh yeah. We have to understand this. I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's true. 
Moses is an adult. It's not like he's stupid. Yes, it was a wrong thing he did. They were not supposed to get married to Ethiopians and all those kinds of things. They were supposed to get married in their household of faith. But he did get married to an Ethiopian. Let God be the one to settle that matter with him. Let God be the one to settle the matter. And more so, why not just meet Moses and talk with him? It's like you guys are sitting on the back and gossiping about him. That's not helping. That's not love. The Bible says when you have a problem with somebody, go and meet the person and talk with the person. If the person doesn't listen, take one person and go and talk with that person. If the person doesn't listen, take one person and then you all go to the leaders and talk to the person. If the person doesn't listen, then treat them as a hidden. Treat them as a hidden means you should let them be. So what's your force? What's the force? What's the grumbling and murmuring? God hates grumbling. He hates murmuring. He hates those things. You see a pastor or a man of God doing something and it's not right. You will not look for an opportunity to be able to tell him personally. You just start um, blackmailing his name. You just start slandering him and saying all kinds of things. We're all human beings and sometimes we might make mistakes once in a while. It's a different thing entirely when the man is doing it continuously. But it's something else when he just makes one mistake and then you take it now and destroy his, his whole reputation. It is bad. It is bad. God would deal with some of us and and sometimes some kinds of things start happening in our lives and we start saying village people village people know involved now you don't go find trouble by yourself with yourself it's the truth and we should face it if it's something wrong that the man is doing and you have an opportunity to be able to meet him meet him and talk about it sometimes we waste all the energy we have instead of preaching the undiluted word of god the good news we start for example i take this live stream a man of God has said something stupid or something uh, irrational or something out of place or he has torted the word of God. And then I come and sit here. I'm talking about all the things that he said and then I'm insulting him and then I'm going back and forth. How am I helping? Am I not even worse than he is? I'm even worse than he is. So what I need to do to counter that is to just come like on a live stream like this and I preach the undiluted word of God. Simple. People are not dummies. They know what they want. When someone is desperate for a solution, when they see the solution, they will know this is the solution to my problem. And they will go to it. So preach the undiluted word of God. Don't go back and forth with men of God on social media. We're just, oh my God. There was a place that they asked in the Bible that day. How do we Christians carry our things to the people of the world to solve it for us? Like what happened that is more than us to solve our things by ourselves? Because we're no longer following the word of God. We're not strictly adhering to the blueprint that is ours. We're not strictly adhering to our manual. That's very dangerous, people. It is really, really dangerous. But hey, that's how things are going. And so God says, who gave you all the right? Like, Moses is humble. I speak with Moses face to mouth to mouth. I speak through prophets and all those things. But when it comes to Moses, we talk like mouth to mouth. You got the guts. <laughs> They'll say big grammar. You got the tutelage to talk about Moses. Who be you? <laughs> God sanctioned Miriam. Like I said, it's Miriam who had leprosy. And I'm surprised because it was him and Aaron who were talking. But Miriam had leprosy. And it's always those things. Hear, hear how they said it. That has God not also been speaking through them. That's how they said it. So you, jealousy had entered the whole matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they said, had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses, had he not spoken also by us? It, pride had already entered. Jealousy had already entered. No, Moses is not married to the Ethiopian woman because God was speaking only through him. No. And... It, it's it's really funny because everybody has a way that they relate to God. Imagine how this prophet was saying he was going to go and marry a prostitute and then everybody started fighting him and then he decided that, oh no, because the people are fighting him, he will not do it. He will miss the purpose of which God called him. See, there are some things that God will tell you to do that might look stupid. I'm not saying in essence that God probably told him to do that, but it might be possible. Because if God is saying, if they are saying that, maybe when he said, when they asked him, he said, God told him. 
So that's why they were asking the question that has God spoken only through him? God has also spoken through them. So why is it like, oh, God want to tell Moses now this thing and then not tell them? When it's a personal thing, it's a personal thing. God doesn't need to tell you for you to tell me. He tells me. So if he has not told you about it and it's a personal thing in my life, you don't need to make a force about it. But they were trying to make a force about it. Jealousy and pride had already entered. That is what always makes us to fight, even in church. Positions, we're fighting for position. If God's church is not our own, can we just quit the fight? Can we just quit the, I don't know, all these things we do? Do your part. Let God do the rest. Do your part. He makes a mistake. Don't you think much more you should be praying for him than joining the devil to destroy him? Pastors and leaders are more vulnerable because they are at the forefront of the battlefield. So brother, we have to be shielding them. We have to be fighting. We have to be joining with them together as a formidable force to fight against the enemy, not joining the enemy to deal with the pastors. It's so sad how some people are in church today like the Pharisees and Sadducees and waiting for this little mistake that a pastor will make and then they use it and blow it out of proportion. That's how the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were waiting. They were following Jesus all around. You would think that they were following him because they were listening and enjoying the message as every other person was doing so. No, they were waiting for the least mistake for God to, for Jesus to make so that they can propagate it, so they can blow it out of proportion. Oh yeah. If that's you, you better repent. You better repent. Because you're just moving towards your destruction. You better repent. Some of us are in church. We're so envious of some people. We're waiting that they should make a mistake. We're waiting that they should fall. If there was a way that we could even pray that they should fall, we'll pray the prayer. <laughs> oh, I remember one time I prayed that kind of prayer. I needed somebody to fall so badly. <laughs> And the Bible says now Moses was meek, very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. The meekest man on earth was Moses. Man, I said Jesus because Jesus was meek too, but Jesus was God. So for human beings, the meekest man on earth was Moses. With all the things that God did through Moses, he was still called the meekest man. Here you would see people, hmm, they should have advertised themselves, publicized themselves and sang all kinds of stories and songs and all. Jesus' fame was spread abroad by people, not by himself. He wasn't the one singing his glory. He wasn't the one singing his praise by himself, no. He was not the one. It was the people that he was helping. When he helped everybody, the person will go and talk about him. He will even help some people and tell them that, oh, don't say nothing. The people will still talk because they could not just help it. It was just so good. When you see fine thing, you go, no. Nobody no go tell you, you go, no. So that's exactly what was happening to these people. And they knew all the good things that Jesus was doing. And so they're following him effortlessly. So there's no need for competition. Do your part. So yes, God is speaking through Moses and speaking to you people. So what? He has things that God will tell him to do personally and he doesn't necessarily have to do anything with you. Imagine Abraham wanting to go sacrifice Isaac and telling Sarah. You know for happen? As in they know for even come off a house. <sighs> Abraham, you drink. What do you drink? <laughs> Are you high on something? <laughs> Which of the God... God who gave me this child after 25 years, you're saying is the same God who says you go and sacrifice it. Abraham, you are high on something. <laughs> hey, you want not keep person. As in, you will probably have to kill Sarah before you get to Isaac. To go do what? <laughs> there are some times when God gives you your vision, when he tells you to do something, you don't you just don't need to tell nobody you just have to calmly and quietly like abraham do what you have to do abraham did not tell even isaac up until they got to the mountain it is that serious it will fulfill a lot of the visions and the purpose and the missions that god assigns us we have to be more quiet 
we have to speak less. Talking about journalists like us is not an easy something, but we have to learn it for the sake of our vision materializing. If not, we will put our visions out there and they will be dealt with so much so that they might even get destroyed because they are put out prematurely. You don't want to put your, you don't want to expose your vision and your mission to unnecessary attacks. That's what we do sometimes. We put our missions and our visions out there and we draw unnecessary attention to them and unnecessary attacks that would not have been if we're more careful, if we're more cautious. May the good Lord help us in Jesus' name. And say, Moses was very meek. All these things that God was doing through him, he was still a very humble person. Like the most, they said the most humble person on earth. On earth. That's a wow. When God is working miracles through you, when God is doing amazing things through you, would you still be humble? A lot of us were failed, we missed it. We started well, but we ended up, we're just doing the, the craziest things ever. Why? Because pride has taken over. Slowly but surely, subtle pride is taking over. That's why. Pride is a very dangerous thing. It was the same thing that got Lucifer to get down with his agents. It was pride. Pride is a very deadly weapon. Please don't use it. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and to Aaron and to Miriam and said, Come eat. Ha! This way God was speaking to people. I want God to speak to me like that though. Ah, it was just like, you know how there's a third person amongst you people. There's a fourth person amongst you people. You guys come here and then they come. and they, Oh my God. I, I need to get to speak to God with that kind of... With, at that kind of level where it's like we're really talking you know sometimes i know that we talk but it's not like so real like the way this one is moses aaron you guys should come and let's talk god doesn't just sanction no and that's why it's also very important when we correct people and when we correct children when you're correcting people in general tell them the thing that they did wrong and then show them the right thing don't just badge on them and all those kinds of things god had to call them to other and then make all these statements and explain to them and give them a background check so that they should see where their mistake was before even punishing them so they know the difference but sometimes we just blot out of anger and we deal with children and we deal with our friends we deal with our relatives and loved ones it's not supposed to be so Bring them, call them, pipe them down and explain, give them a back story as to why, why. And he said, this is Moses. Oh, me, I speak to Moses mouth to mouth. Who gave you guys the audacity? Who gave you, who gave you, who even gave you the thought? See, there are some things that we do in this our generation that in the generation before, we could not dare do them. We could not. How would you even sit and be talking when... The eyes they'll give you, you know whether you're supposed to go to the room. The one they'll give you, you know whether you're going to be in trouble. The one they'll give you, you know, you we used to know all the kinds of eyes now that our parents would look at us. But today she will be sitting and laughing and making noise and making gestures and making some really dumb suggestions sometimes and their parents are just laughing and smiling sheepishly. <laughs> mm. So it's just the same that kind of thing. And, and God is saying, this is somebody that you should respect. You should respect. But I guess familiarity, familiarity is one of the problems. It's one of the issues. You become familiar with the man of God. You know, you know he's in and out. He's vulnerable to you and all that. So you take it for granted. And you start talking trash about him. Mm -hmm. Familiarity breeds content. And when we're familiar with the people who are around us that God can bless us through we miss some of the blessings because our familiarity does not regard the grace on the person's life and so the grace cannot work for you when you don't reverse somebody's grace when you don't see their grace and you honor the grace it's not going to work for you the person's grace cannot work for you when you don't respect it and a lot of us who have become too familiar with some men of God and some women of God their grace is seemingly not working for us because we don't respect them. We don't value their grace. So what else do we want God to do? To God come and kill himself again? 
Should he come and die a second time for us to know that he really wants us to get the best? No, he has put us in the place where we have to make a choice. And the choice is ours to make. He can't make the choices for us. He can't make choices for us. That's why he gave us the wheel in the first place. So that we should be able to make reasonable choices. But sometimes we're just hurting him continuously and giving him a hard time. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house? With him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently, and not in the dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant? The Holy Spirit called me to other some time ago that I should not talk about servants of God. I should not. I should not. So when I hear people saying, oh, I don't like this pastor, I don't like that pastor, me, I'm just quiet though. I don't give my opinion, neither do I join the conversation. I didn't they. I travel. When you've had the personal relationship with God and the personal encounter on some things, you would be careful because you know that God is expecting more from you. They say to whom much is given, much more is required. So to whom much is given, much more is required. So I'm not going to be playing and, and, and expecting that God will treat me the same as he treats the next person. I have my exams to, to pass. I have to get it right. And if I go playing, it's me who is going to suffer the consequences. Somebody is going to do it and get away with it because it's not their exams. That's not their level yet. But I am at that level. And so God is going to so deal with me. And I'll be like, ah, but this person did the same thing and I did it. Why is God punishing me and then letting the person slide? Because he had taught you the lesson. So you should be better off. You should be better off. You don't expect a child in primary two to write a primary four test and pass, right? They have to write a test for primary two. So if they get um, to get the primary four exams and they don't pass it, do you expect them to be punished? No. But if a primary four pupil fails that test, they need to be sanctioned for failing it because they have been taught. If you have been taught, you have to pass, right? But when you don't pass, that's when you get a sanction, even though you've been taught. But if you've not been taught, they can't be punishing you for not getting something right that you've not been taught how to do it. That's the point. So you, you can't afford to be comparing yourself with anybody when it comes to this Christian race. Because there's some things God has taught you already and he expects more from you. He expects you to do better than someone who has never heard this thing. And so after he had told them and given them everything, he punished me. Ha! <laughs> And then they all went back now to Moses to go and beg. Abi, is it not them who were just saying a while ago that has God not also spoken to them? Why did they not just go directly to God and go apologize? Shebi, God is speaking to all of us now. All we are pastors, all we are ministers of God, all we are servants of the Lord. Abi, <laughs> there are people and there are people. There are pastors and there are pastors. There are servants of God and there are servants of God. There are people in every field. There are doctors and there are doctors. You have to be good at what you do. You have to be extremely good at what you do to be chosen. So they went back to the same Moses. This was Moses that they were just bad mouthing a while ago. And then God punished them for bad mouthing Moses. And they went back but to the same Moses to go and beg God on their behalf. How ironic. Was God not also speaking to them? That's what they said, Sha. Who does Moses think he is? Is God speaking only to him? God is also speaking to us. All of a sudden, God who also speaks to them, they could not go to him directly and go and apologize and get help. They had to use Moses as bait. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of something. There's a part of scripture that says, bring forth your strong reasons. Sometimes I actually use my mom, my dad, my pastor's wife, my, my people. I actually use them as my strong reasons why God should give me something. Because I don't even think I've done anything enough to bring it as a strong point to hold on to God and say, Lord, look at what I've done. Look at mm. Sometimes I just go to God and say, Lord, look at what my mother has done. Look at the help that my mother has helped people. Look at the help that my father is helping people, even till date. I did use and like leverage are you talking about and it works it works mm -hmm. 
So Moses went and pleaded with God. And God said, which one? Lila, it goes suffer for some time. Let her enjoy it so that by the time she's coming back, she will know how to close her mouth. Sometimes you'll be in a thing because God wants to teach you a proper lesson. He will allow the enemy to deal with you. Because mm -hmm. it looks like Miriam's mouth will probably don't just shut out. She'll be grumbling and talking all kinds of things. That's why the leprosy caught only her. But she was talking with error now. Can you imagine? This is where men are still being let off the hook again. But I'll not say being let off the hook. I'll probably say that um, Miriam should have known better. She probably had given a lesson that she was supposed to pass the exam, but she failed woefully, and so she had to be sanctioned. Even though Aaron was there, but Aaron probably didn't take a hit. Maybe he didn't understand that. There are some things that you know that your pastor doesn't know. Because of the fellowship you have with God and the dealing you have with God and something that God wants to show you, it doesn't make you way better than your pastor because that's what some people start taking now. So your pastor might still falter in that area, but you, you're well vested in that area. Your pastor may be well vested in another area and you, you're falling in that area. And that's why we're one body so that our weaknesses complement, our strengths complement each other. Like maybe my weakness is your strength, your strength is my weakness and all like that. So we keep complementing each other now with our strengths and then covering up for our weaknesses. And that's why God loves unity in diversity. He loves unity in diversity. So yeah, Moses went on and was asking God, God should just um, be able to heal Miriam and everything. And God said, no, I should work the punishment for some time. So please don't even get yourself involved in these things before you have to work a kind of punishment. It might be lengthy, it might be annoying, it might be just don't do it. If God says don't get involved in fornication, don't get involved in fornication. It has consequences. If God says don't bear false weakness, don't bear false weakness, it has consequences. The, I was reading today at my quiet time and they said a lot of people have born false weakness and that was when they were not born again. When they became born again, they don't want to go and restitute. See, restitution is very important though. Let's not be playing with it because some of us might miss it because we did not restitute. Restitution is very important. You blackmail, you slandered somebody before you're a child of God and you got saved. You have to go apologize to the person. You have to. It's embarrassing, yes, but you have to do things right. I remember the guy, this one, be led by the Spirit of God. Though. I remember the guy who said he went and gave back his diploma, or it was his degree, and said that no that he's not deserving of the degree, that the degree during some times during the exams, he copied answers. I actually spoke with my friends in the exam hall, so that's equivalent to cheating. Yep. So this man went and then they told him that for his bravery and his all, they accept that he can use the certificate even though he made mistakes. That as long as he's, he's um, aware and well vested in the field he wants to go to, he can use the certificate that they're really proud of him and they're happy that he could take that bold step. Restitution is important. It is embarrassing, but it is important. You bore false weakness against a lot of some women have borne false weakness against pastor. He wanted to rape me. He wanted to do this because you're throwing yourself at him like Potiphar's wife and he's not interested in you. So you frame him up. When you finally repent, my dear sister, you have to go and restitute. You have to go and confess. You have to go and confess. And the funny thing is that good news hardly ever travels fast. I remember some guy on Facebook who was saying that he was a... How do they call it again? He was saying... What he said? It was an ISIS member. Or what, I can't remember. But he said something really crazy. And that video went crazy viral. When he came and apologized and said it was just a prank... The prank video did not even reach up to how many thousand views. But the, the video that he made before, the wrong one, had gone to millions of views. So when we want to do some of those things, let's be careful because it looks like people just have a knack for bad news. So when something is wrong and it's bad, people share it like crazy. And then when you're instead waiting that something good like should be shared, mm -mm, it will reach some people, it will just die there, they will just die there. Then. But when it's negative, come and see people sharing it. Pop, 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 left, right, front, back, and center. Before you know it, in how many minutes? 
The whole internet is talking about it. But when something good happens, maybe a good crusade happened somewhere, maybe there was healing and de deliverance somewhere, we're never going to hear about it. Except we build our own systems like that and make sure that we begin to sing those things that God is doing in our lives. We begin to see them. We begin to do them. We begin to enjoy them. And our Christian life will be beautiful. So Moses went and prayed and God said, no, they should keep her out of the camp. She'll learn her lesson. Like I said, God has just said to Simon Peter, I pray for you that you will not fall. He could do that. But he says, I pray that when you fall, you come back. You'll be able to help other people. Me, I've been at 40, 40 Peter 7, they do not in me. I used to be pompous. Like, I used to be Christian proud. Like, oh, if you're a child of God, you can't make mistakes. If you're a child of God, you're supposed to be totally yielded to the Spirit of God. So you can't make mistakes, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Until I got into my, thank God for salvation or thank God for saving me. Because I don't know where I would have been today. I would have been history. I would have been story. Because I contemplated committing suicide a few times. But I'm glad I'm here today. I'm really grateful that I'm here today. It has been God all the way. So Moses prayed and she finally got her healing. She finally got her deliverance. This is what I have to say to a lot of people. Don't fight some things. Don't sweat some things. Just let it flow naturally. Let it flow naturally. Okay? So, people, this is where we're going to be wrapping up with our chapter idea for today. Hope you had a great time. I did. Tomorrow is another day. Let's get ready. Numbers chapter 13. We're going to read ahead of time. And we'll come back and have a swell time together. The book of Numbers has, I think, 36 chapters. So, we still have a long way to go. But we're glad we're on the fourth book of the Bible already in the Old Testament. And we're done already with the New Testament. So if you desire to listen to an audio Bible done by me in the New Testament, just send me a comment in the comment section or send me a hi or something in my inbox. And I'm definitely going to send you the links. Now it's available all on our YouTube page. Soon enough, we're bringing it to our Facebook pages, to other social media platforms, sorry. And we're hoping that it's going to be easily accessible to as many people as possible thank you so much for always being there for always standing out for us and uh, for always coming through and supporting us on this program we're really grateful love we thank you for your word let this word go a long way to nourish our minds and our bodies and who we are lord father so that we're going to do things and do things the christ way not our way to glorify you all in all Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you've heard an answer. Let this word be engrafted on the flesh tables of our heart and give us the grace to be doers of it, not only hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, people. I'm really grateful. I'm glad that you all were here. May the good Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.